Right, well, thank you everyone for joining us and, and you're very welcome, especially in such a lovely night after the weather we've had. So I'm glad to see such a good turnout. Adi was worried about speaking to so many people, but you'll be absolutely fine. Yes, go ahead. I'd also like to welcome my own club members who are joining us tonight instead of our usual club meeting. Um, before we start, can I ask everyone to remain on mute during the presentation? Would you mute everybody before we start, Alistair? Yeah. Yep, certainly. Yeah. And just to let you know that we are recording this, so if you don't want to be recorded, you can stop video and you won't be recorded. It'll just, it'll just hear the presentations. Um, there will be an opportunity for questions and discussions later. And we have a really interesting presentation tonight, so I don't want to take up any more of your time. And I will now hand you over to Nigel Danby, who is the, um, Nigel's the chair and trustee of the Rotary Shoebox Charity. And he will give us a short introduction about the history and development of the shoebox scheme. So are you okay, Nigel, to take over? Thank you very much, Mary. Yes, and good evening, everybody. Good night. Good evening. <laughs> I know everybody's muted, so there won't be an awful lot of good evenings coming back, I wouldn't imagine. Um, thank you again for the invitation this evening to, uh, to talk to you about the Rotary Shoebox Scheme. Um, I'll try not to say anything that you probably already know, um, but just to give you a bit of background, the scheme started originally back in 1994. Um, some of you may be old enough to remember that there were some rather horrific photographs came on the BBC and the television in general when we saw some pictures of children in cots in a, an orphanage um, somewhere in Romania. Um, and there were six or seven children to a cot and they were rocking backwards and forwards and it upset an awful lot of people. And um, a group of Rotarians in what was then District 1280, which is now part of my district, 1285, um, decided they'd like to do something to help these children. And the thing they decided to do was set up a club project and fill some shoeboxes with some gifts for the children that they could send out and uh, hopefully not improve their lives, obviously, but perhaps make life a little different on a particular day. That was back in 1994. As of today, um, the Rotary Shoebox Scheme, which itself came into being officially in 1997, has sent over a million shoeboxes to Eastern Europe. Obviously, we started in Romania, but then it spread to other countries across the, uh, the region. And so we've sent over a million boxes in those times, or as we like to think of it, we've sent a million smiles. Um, because we recognise we can't change anybody's life, but what we can do is let somebody know that somebody somewhere cares and that we've made a bit of a difference to a child or their family on that particular day. And perhaps, as I say, given them a smile and something to remember for the future. So that's basically the, the very broad background that um, the shoebox scheme is all about. Obviously over that time, there's been various developments. Um, you will know that we've moved originally, we sent ordinary shoe boxes, and now we send our own boxes. Um, and the next lot that you receive, for those of you who will be getting them, um, are slightly different to the ones you had last year. Um, because we've changed the definition. Uh, originally, I think we sent children's boxes, but then through popular demand in many ways, um, we were asked to send household boxes. And of course, the children that we started sending the boxes to grew up a bit. And um, by the uh, 2010, they were teenagers um, and still needing support and needing help. So. Um, we started sending teenage boxes. And then a few years ago, somebody had the bright idea, well, if you're doing children, teenagers, and household, well, why don't you do babies? So there we are. We have the four categories, toys, um, teenagers, household, and babies. One of the problems that we've had throughout the whole period is 
dare I say, the quality of the boxes. Sometimes with the best of intentions and for all sorts of good reasons, the boxes that we get back don't quite come up to being what we would consider a suitable gift. Not that there's anything wrong with the contents, but very often there's only half a box full or sometimes less than that. And um, we've looked at this as to find out why. And we believe that one of the reasons could be that the toy box is restrictive. It's the one that has, if you like, the highest failure rate, whereas the teenage box, the baby box and the household box, they come in full of lovely things. Whereas the toy box might come in with two or three little toys or some cars or something. But it's not in itself a full box that you can give as a gift. So we're wondering if perhaps the definition of toys is a bit misleading. So because it should be a child box so that you can, yes, by all means, you can fill it with some toys, but you can also put in some hat, gloves, scarves, uh, educational things, uh, writing books, craning books, pens, pencils, even things like toothbrush and toothpaste, anything that you would normally give to a child that would just improve their, their lives, really. So we're changing the definition of the toy box to child box so that people might hopefully think a little bit broader about what they might put in. So any boxes that you get in future will have the four categories, child, teenager, household and baby. Um, another very recent change um, was that up, up until last summer, we always rented accommodation in the form of a bit of a warehouse from a partner at International Aid Trust. Um, but unfortunately, because of the pandemic, they were forced to move out of that warehouse, which caused us to find new accommodation. So as of last September, <clears throat> we uh, acquired our own warehouse. And so we're now totally independent of anybody. And we operate our own warehouse in a place called Royton, which is near Oldham, which seems to be quite often in the news these days, um, just, outside Greater uh, just outside Manchester itself. So um, we have our own warehouse. We're um, able to do lots of things now that we couldn't do because we're not dependent on anybody opening the doors or being available to us when we need access. So that, that's one recent change. And another recent development was we developed a new order processing system, which now means that should anybody require to buy some boxes from us, you can do it directly through our website. You don't have to do bits of paper and all manner of uh, juggling. You can go online through our website, order boxes, pay online, and we will deliver. And not only will we deliver, if necessary, we'll collect as well. But I know uh, very grateful we are to many people in your district who club together to uh, organise collections and things of that nature. So I'm not going to interfere with that side of it, but uh, certainly if anybody needed boxes you can order them and pay for them online. Um, where are we at the moment? At the moment we are struggling to get 6,000 boxes out to Romania. Uh, we've been trying for the last week to get them out but the lorry keeps either failing to turn up or turns up at times when we're not there. Um, so we'll keep working on that one because I know there are some needed. Uh, it's not a full load house at the moment but when you consider that we've just been through a pandemic and Rotary Clubs have struggled to do many of their projects we were very grateful from the period through to Christmas from September to uh, Christmas we did actually manage to get a full load of boxes together uh, which we sent out to Ukraine in uh, February and we've still got another half load nearly um, and hopefully that'll keep building so we can get another lorry load to Romania in the very near future. So that's the shoebox uh, scheme where we are at the moment. We've, we've done a great deal of work and thank you to everybody that supported us throughout the last, well, it's 27 years now, I think. Um, it's been a tremendous effort and District 1010 has always been one of our major supporters, um, accounting very often for something like 25% of the boxes that we, we gather annually. So. Uh, long may that continue. So thank you for your time. I won't take up any more time because I know these other people have got more to tell you than I can. 
Um, and obviously, if you have any questions regarding the scheme or how it works or anything of that nature, I'll be very happy to uh, answer those questions later on. So thank you, Mary. Um, I'll hand back to you and hopefully that gave people a, an insight into what we're doing and why we're here tonight. Yeah, thanks very much, Nigel. It's good yeah. to hear the, the changes going forward. Um, if you've got any questions, if you can put them in the chat box, then we can make sure everything's covered and there will be an opportunity at the end for questions and discussion. But at least if they're in the chat box, we can make sure they get answered one way or another. Now, um, I'm going to hand you over to Ron McHale and Ron's so well known in Rotary, I'm sure he doesn't need much of an introduction, but and was previously head of Oak Bank School since 2000 and in 2017 was Lord Provost of Aberdeen, Deputy Lord Provost of Elevated Jeff. Um, he's a member of the Aberdeen St Nicholas Club. Of, in 2008, he took on the role of Rotary Shoebox Coordinator and since then, District Rotary Clubs have provided over 120 clubs for the charity. So without further ado, I will pass you over to Ron, who will be the speaker of the evening, Adi. Okay, thanks, uh, thanks Mary, thank you. Deputy Provost, the Lord Provost is the Aberdeen one, but then... Um, Deputy Lord Provost sounds <laughs> even even better. Right, okay. <laughs> Thank you and good evening everybody and just again thanks just for attending this uh, Zoom meeting. So I'm going to introduce Adi. Adi Oris has been working for Hope and Homes for Children in Romania since 2002, where he is the programme officer reporting on the progress of various projects to external and internal donors. He's also been involved in in all the major projects for this charity, such as closing down institutions, preventing family separation, reintegration of children into their families and supporting young care leavers as they transition into independent living. So for the past 13 years, he's had responsibility for the distribution of our Rotary shoeboxes, where he has involved other agencies, including grocery clubs, local authorities, building up a comprehensive distribution network covering over a third of Romania's 15 counties. Adi is a board member in the management board of Euro Child, a bustle-based organization which advocates for children's rights and for ending institutional care. He's got a PhD in Romanian literature and he teaches English at the university in Bayamara. So um, colleagues, fellow Rotarians, guests, please extend a warm welcome to Adi Oris who will tell us what happens to our shoeboxes when they arrive in Romania. Over to you, Adi. Thank you. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and thank you for, inv for inviting me. Thank you for your invitation. Um, well, that's quite an attendance, I would like to say. <laughs> I'm a bit nervous, so... Okay, uh, I will start by uh, picking up on uh, something that Nigel mentioned about uh, in his uh, in in the beginning of his presentation about the images that you saw um, uh, from Romania about children in cots and uh, you know children in orphanages and so on and so forth. And just to give you a context or an idea of where we started from, in 1989 we had around 100,000 children in institutions, in orphanages in Romania. And these were the only accepted, acceptable and existing uh, um, ways of taking care of children uh, in state care at that time. So imagine around uh, 600 uh, orphanages with 100,000 children in them. Uh, as you have seen in those images, they were uh, isolated, they were not part of the community, they were not uh, considered as being part of the community, and what's even worse, they were, to call them, they were nobody's children. They were nobody's children, not they didn't matter, they were nobody's children. Go to the next slide, please. And uh, therefore they received no individual attention. 
none of their uh, situations were considered individually and no solutions for them were considered individually. Can we go to the next slide, please? Today, following uh, very long period of reforms protection, we are at a point where we have less than uh, 6,000 children. We do have 5,000 children in state care, but out of them, less uh, 6,000 children are in orphanages. The rest are in uh, small family home, in, uh, in group homes, or with foster carers. How, can we go to the next slide, please? And the next one. However, one of the problems that we're currently dealing with in Romania is poverty. And I should tell you that according to our last data, uh, there are numerous vulnerable families and through the system, they are not taking into account their situation. Therefore, they do not receive any sort of support from the authorities. Pandemic made uh, uh, these figures even worse. We do not have, as of right now or for, uh, at this point, we do not have an official estimate of how much the uh, the situation evolved. Let's say. However, I can tell you that from uh, estimates of the government, these uh, nineteen percent have turned into almost twenty three or twenty four percent. So. You can imagine that around 24, almost a quarter of Romania's children are now living in poverty. And this severe poverty is sometimes the trigger or could be the main trigger for the separation of children from their families and for having children in institutional care. Can we have the next slide, please? Poverty, and this is one of the problems. This is, this is, this, this, sort of a problem that we have uh, the fact that when perceived the same way everywhere for some people poverty can mean the fact that they don't have uh, brand clothes or brand uh, I don't know brand sneakers for other people for other children such as in, in this image poverty means that they have only these clothes they do not have anything else so it's either this or nothing can we go to the next slide, please? For other people, poverty means that they don't have a house with four or five rooms. For these people in this photo, poverty means that they have only one room in which they cook, in which they wash their clothes, and in which they go to sleep. This is their universe. This is the place where they live. Kids and parents, one room. Everything happens here. Can we go to the next slide, please? Andy, can I ask you to unmute yourself, please? I've had to unmute everyone. Can you hear me now? Yeah, perfect. Thank you. Okay. For some people, poverty means the fact that they don't, or for some kids, they don't have the last toys. They don't have the last PlayStation. For other kids, poverty means that they don't have any toys. They don't have anything to play with. And this is why, can we go to the next slide, please? This is why I'm saying poverty has different perceptions. And when we say that in Romania, 19% officially, 23% uh, 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 unofficially of the children live in severe poverty or are close to living in severe poverty means in many situations, what you can see in this photo means that they do not live safely, that the condition in which condition, conditions, sorry, in which they live can lead to the separation of children from their parents. The most dramatic thing that can happen, a child can lose his parents while his parents are still alive. And this is what we are trying to do. We are trying to break the cycle of poverty together with the uh, central authorities, with the government, with the county authorities and with the local authorities. We as Hope and Homes for Children are trying to break this cycle of poverty. We are trying to support families, vulnerable families to stay with their children. We are trying to, to have the children in orphanages come back to, the, to their families and live with their parents. And we are trying to have young adults who are leaving the, uh, the institution and the state care to start independent living. Can we go to the next slide, please? Next slide, please. 
Do, and we alone in this uh, in this uh, uh, endeavor by the state, we are supported by the authorities, and we are the shoeboxes. These are extremely important for three reasons. The first one is that they uh, allow us to reach. children, more families, more people. Then the second one, they are a material the type of cannot receive from the authorities because the authorities don't have the money or the budget because they, they, they this and this, this is why uh, they are extremely important because they bring responsibility to the family. They are a gift, but at the same time, they are something that the most smile of trying to do something for the same time, they need to do something for themselves. And this helps in, uh, in, uh, on the side like on a site if we are talking about vulnerable families or if we are talking about children in you know, orphanage to the next slide please so where do the shoe boxes go well most of the shoe boxes most or say around 70 up, up to 75 percent of the shoe boxes go to the families uh, that are in, for one one reason or another, are in very functions and are uh, close to being from their children. Uh, we provide families with shoeboxes according to their needs, identified by social workers and psychologists, um, according to um, the number of children that they have, so that each child receives at least one shoebox, each child feels that he or she is, in a, uh, is an individual and he or his needs or her needs are taken into account, so they receive something, each one is unique. Uh, we provide these families with uh, shoeboxes also uh, that contain uh, sometimes, or uh, in many situations, those shoeboxes also also um, household items that are extremely, extremely useful for these families. Part of the shoeboxes go to children who are in small family homes, more often in orphanages, in old times. It is very important to receive shoeboxes because it helps them build their self-esteem. Now, while these children may have needed to survive, because you, you do not really live in, in an orphanage, you, you somehow survive in an orphanage, they do not have belongings, personal belongings. They do not have things that are that that they own and that they acquired. Uh, I don't know, from somebody who thinks of them or from a, from a person that they love or from a person that's close to them. They have everything in common, right? So, uh, um, I don't know, the management of the institutions uh, of the orphanage decides that uh, uh, they need uh, pants. They will just uh, buy 100 pants and distribute them to the children without giving it any thought that maybe a child would like a blue pen and the other one would like a red pen. They do not have something that says, I'm an individual, my name is John. He's an individual, his name is, I don't know, Jack. So having these shoe boxes, it's not only the fact that they have something, it's the fact that they have something of their own, something which they care about and something which they can cherish as being uh, 
an item, whatever it is, a particular item that they receive from someone who thought about them as a person. You are John, you like a blue pen. Okay, here is your blue pen. Or here, uh, here is a box in which you will find pens, colors, papers, whatever. This is for you. But what the child understands is this is especially for me because this is something what I like. And this helps the children build their self-esteem. Also, another uh, category, I would say, of beneficiaries, um, besides the children, uh, the children in uh, uh, small family homes or the children in institutions and the children in uh, uh, vulnerable families, is the children who are reunited from uh, state care who are reunited with their parents. Sometimes the parents find it hard to meet the needs of the child or of the children because they, I don't know, they, they, they're just not thinking about the fact that the child needs this or the child needs that or uh, uh, he likes one particular item or he may not like this or he may like this more. And this is where we support somehow the families in giving them a start, giving them a push and, and showing them like, look, this is what the child would like, or this is uh, what the children would like, because we have worked with these children beforehand, before they were reunited with, uh, with the families and we somehow know them. And this is what they would like. This is uh, uh, the toys that they enjoy. This is the, I don't know, uh, school supplies that they enjoy. This is something that they need, or this is something that they would, uh, they would, uh, they would rather have for school and so on and so forth. And this is something that uh, the families find extremely encouraging. It's not only about the children, it's also about the families. They find it encouraging because they know that someone is there for them to help them, but also sometimes uh, somebody is uh, uh, taking their child into account and is showing them how to do it. And this is very, very important for them. Can we have the next slide, please? So, what would be then the impact of these shoeboxes? Obviously, for the children in uh, families that are at risk, uh, the, the, one of the most, uh, 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 or one of the immediate consequences is that the children avoid social exclusion and marginalization. Because, for example, there are children in these poor families, in these deprived families, uh, who would not go to school because they say the other kids are bullying me because I don't have uh, pens, I don't have school supplies, I don't have this, I don't have that. And if they receive two or three shoe boxes with school supplies, let's say, they can go to school exactly like any other child. They will be exactly like any other child. They will be in school, they will be encouraged to go to school. Uh, advantages or advantages or the same start they will be at the same level as the other the other children and this uh, and also it increases they have the same things as the other do they don't feel different they don't now for the children who are reunited with their families from state here type of support, so the shoeboxes are a type of support for the families, as I said before, they present something that the staff, uh, so, something that the parents would not, uh, uh, would not prioritize. The parents in the family would have other, uh, uh, other uh, priorities. They would spend money on other things, useful of course, but something that uh, is not extremely special for a child, such as a toy, such as a present, a gift, whatever. And this comes as an addition. So we have this, this, and this, and this is especially for the child. And then, and again, it's that uniqueness, is that uh, feeling of somebody thinking of them, which is the most important thing that the child perceives. And obviously for the children in state care, for the children in those orphanages, first and foremost, the shoeboxes, whatever they find in them, whatever they find, starting with a small, uh, uh, I don't know, table tennis ball and ending with a scarf or with gloves, whatever. Anything can give them the feeling of ownership and individuality. They have something of their own. They have something that they will, uh, that they will cherish and obviously something that they will think about 
as being a present. Also, it increases the responsibility towards their personal belongings because once they have these, they will, they will obviously share them and respect this. This is something of their own. They will not trade it, they will not give it away, or if they will give it away, they will give it away to somebody special because that's part of them. It's part of themselves, that small thing. Can I get the next slide, please? Uh, the, the shoe boxes make a huge impact or have a huge impact. They make a, they make a huge difference. It's not only from the material point of view, or it, it, it is from the material point of view, but this is not the most important, uh, the most important thing. Uh, we also need to think about the development of the children. As I was saying before, uh, shoe boxes and uh, the content of this uh, help uh, children build their self-esteem, help ch children build the ownership of uh, individuality, uh, help them feel equal to the others, help them feel, uh, uh, help them integrate in a community, whatever, class, uh, friends, whatever. Uh, if we are talking about uh, youngsters who leave uh, state care and they are, uh, they are uh, starting a, a new life uh, or independent life, part of the shoeboxes or the content of the shoeboxes that are especially uh, filled with um, household items may actually help them with their new lives, like start a new life, whatever they find there. It's something that they will not spend money on. Therefore, they can save money and spend money on something else. And from the social point of view, which is the most important thing or one of the most important aspects from the social point of view those shoe boxes make the children um, feel like they are part of a community uh, they make the young the young care leavers feel that they are part of uh, uh, or that they can start independent live lives and uh, make the families at risk feel that somebody is next to them that somebody is supporting them and the most important thing is that the families can and will remain together with their children. And this is the essence. Can we have the next slide, please? Um, as Nigel was saying, I will pick up again on his words. And as Nigel was saying, uh, well, it is nice to know that, uh, uh, that uh, a child uh, can think about uh, uh, somebody, can think about the fact that something, somebody somewhere is thinking uh, of making his or her day a bit better and giving a smile and so on and so forth. It's more than that. It's much more than that. These shoeboxes manage to give the children back their childhood. These children, or we understand it. They never received the present. They never received the gift. They never had uh, uh, um, and we forgot what is, or they, maybe they don't. They don't know. They don't know how it is to receive a new thing, book or whatever. And this is what the shoe boxes manage to do. These shoe boxes manage to give back these children the the feeling of being a child. Well, uh, this is my presentation. Any questions, please ask them. Uh, as uh, I will answer them. And thank you for uh, having me. Thank you for inviting me. And thank you. I'm sure it's um, done the same for most people on here. Um, there's a couple of questions in the chat box. Boxes within 10. I think that's maybe more for Ron. Are there timescales within 10, 10 collecting? Um, well, we've traditionally done it for Easter and for Christmas. And if um, there was a sort of proposal to change that, but it, um, I think we have to bear in mind that schools, if we're, if we're using schools, 
um, it's the time we get the boxes out and um, they come back again, um, we're getting them back for about November. So unless the, the district wanted to, wanted to change those arrangements, I mean, they are going to be changed because previously when we had the district council meeting, we got the boxes then, they can now be distributed um, um, allocated much differently. But if I can just comment on that, if, I'm, if I may. Um, Nigel mentioned what he would like, what one of the proposals for ordering boxes is that you just go onto their website and order. And um, what he also mentioned to me previously was that you put, as well as the name of your club, include district as well, because it's very difficult for them to be able to distinguish which district our club is in. Um, so to mention that, um, if you are ordering boxes using the system that we have, we've got on the district webpage um, a drop form, which is a, which is the form for ordering the boxes, which also includes payment arrangements um, by banks or by check. Um, so we now have we now got two systems. Maybe we need to look at that and see what would be the easiest to to use. As far as Nigel is concerned. I'm ordering direct with the rotary shoebox scheme would be the best. Um, so at the moment, the plan is that we'll be, we'll be having the boxes will be distributed and we will have them for it be November. That's been the time before. If you want to change that, you'll have to let me know. Um, and I think, yeah, is that, does that answer the question? Do we have any questions that are not in the chat box? I can't see anybody's hands. Can you see anything else there? Um, Elizabeth and Paddy, whoever that is. Um, Paddy Walsh, uh, in uh, Rotary Club of Inverness. Thank you very much, Adrian, for that, uh, that presentation. Very illuminating. It seems to me that the best judge of what you put into the boxes is uh, yourselves or people working under your direction. And they are, uh, our idea of what would be valuable or useful and durable for a child may be very different a lot of our boxes, we, we pay for the boxes and don't fill them. What would you say to that? Who would choose the content? Thank you. Adi, are you okay to come back? Yeah. Sorry? Can you reply to... Yes. Uh, yes, Paddy. Um, well... Actually, I would I would uh, go a bit further and I would say that the best uh, judge of the boxes are the kids themselves. And uh, it's a pity that the photos fail to uh, convey the entire joy of these children when they open the boxes. It's a pity that you don't see the how their light, how their eyes and their faces light up when they see the content of the boxes, whatever that content is, and uh, uh, however, let's say unfit for their age or for their gender, we might think it is. This being said, as a general tendency. I eat uh, many of the children we used to work with, we started working with, are now teenagers and uh, obviously their needs change. And the content, the content of the shoe boxes somehow uh, not necessarily needs to change, but it would be better to be suited for teenagers a bit, and this is what this is what we uh, what we what we have seen that uh, the kids are now uh, are now teenagers and their tastes, uh, you know, like are a bit different of what it used to be some years ago. Does this answer your question or not really? Well, you have. I don't know necessarily what my own children and their children want in their boxes and I'm not sure I'm a judge of what children as poor as this in, in Romania what they want so um, I'm, I'm not sure what I would choose to put in a teenager's box for example but anyway 
if you yeah i know it's 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 a toughie this one this one is quite it's quite difficult uh, because uh as you said you wouldn't be sure you're not sure even about your children how about other kids i mean what they would like your children how about other kids that you don't know anything about or you just have an idea about them and so on and so forth but i think that uh in order to fill the boxes i think that the best uh, uh solution or the best judgment would be even if it's difficult i know and you just said it what would a typical five year old child or six or seven or 10 or teenager so what would a typical kid of this age enjoy i know it's difficult uh if i were to choose for myself i wouldn't know what i would enjoy <laughs> let alone children so i know i know let alone children uh but this is this is what uh, i i think this is what the best judgment should be what would a typical child if there is anything typical about children enjoy okay thank you you're welcome i i i i'm sorry i cannot give you a clear a more clear answer i don't have one because i <laughs> i don't know how to put it <laughs> could, could i i did mention the, um, Educational things for schools are quite important. They have yes, pens and pencil things for school. Yeah. Yes, these are quite important because in Romania, at least, uh, school is so school taxes. You 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 don't pay when you go to school. School is subsidized in terms of taxes, right? But other than that, the parents need to 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 buy school supplies, books, uh, so on and so forth. And these can be quite expensive for uh, families who are at risk single parent families and so on and so forth. And unfortunately, and I know that uh, I imagine this, this, this is a very difficult decision. What would you buy? School supplies for your child to, so that he has a better future or food for your children? It's, it's a very difficult choice, but some families need to make it. So what, what do we do? Do we buy food or do we buy, I don't know, books, backpacks, whatever. It's, it's, it's a choice no family should be in the position of making. But still, there are some who, who are at this point. Could I, could I just make a comment, please, Mary? Yeah, go ahead. Uh, on this question of what to put in, uh, and that is right. I mean, it, it's, it's a tricky one, but we do publish lists of ideas for people as to what they might put in a box. It's not a comprehensive list by any means, but if you go on our website and you want to know what to put in the various categories of boxes, um, there are lists there of items that may be of interest to you. Um, I mean, our standard response is if you buy it for your own children, then the children in Romania or Ukraine or anywhere else would probably be very appreciative. Um, and each of the categories has a whole range of things that you could choose to put in a box. The only thing I would say about children is, and Addy made the point, if you're gonna fill a box for a child, make sure that the things you put in it are suitable to the age. Um, because we do ask people on the lid of the box to say, this is for a boy or a girl of a certain age. Um, and we know for a fact that people will put on there, this is for a boy age two to 12. <laughs> Now, to be fair, there's a lot of difference between a two-year-old boy and a 12-year-old boy. <laughs> and inevitably, we end up opening the box to try and narrow it down and find out what's actually in there. Um, but I mean, if you're buying toys, any toy shop will have toys in age categories. It says on the box, this is for a child of a certain age. If you're buying clothes, it's for a child of a certain age. So if you pick the age that you want to fill the box for and find appropriate items, it's a great help. Um, Addy mentioned teenagers. Yeah, teenagers are a trouble. They are a problem, especially boys. What do you buy a 15 year old boy? Well, the answer's on our list. Um, there's all sorts of things. The only thing I would ask people to bear in mind is you've seen the pictures that Addy showed us of where people live. Um, I know we do put on the box, please don't put automatic washing machine powder in. 
for obvious reasons. Very few people would have an automatic washing machine. Um, but household items and things that you'd use in bathroom or clothing or educational items, they're all on the list. And a nice mix in a box is a good thing. Yeah, a toy, some some things I think it's a good idea. But if you want, it's on our website. Um, Hugh Begg, he said his hand up really well. Thank you, Mary. Um, this is really, first of all, I, I, for, for the, my own daughter, uh, 30 years ago, uh, initiative started, Eddie, actually volunteered for a, a year in a Romanian orphanage. Uh, everything that you have said about deprivation is absolutely true. And it was heartbreaking for her. And it's a delight uh, to, that you've done so much. And it's a, an indication of my own personal commitment to this and also our club here in Manifest. We will continue to support you. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you very much for this. Mary, may I take two questions that I, I've seen in the chat? Is it yeah, okay? Please, uh, yeah, I was just okay, back. so Eliana, if I pronounce it right, hopefully. Um, uh, she asks, uh, how many families do you aim to reach with the shoeboxes? Well, it depends on how many shoeboxes we get because the number uh, varies from load to load. But I could tell you that during the last two or three uh, um, years when we received shoeboxes, we reached uh, around four... Uh, thousand children in each year you need to keep in mind the fact that uh, some children may receive two boxes so not just one or some families may receive more than one box because they have more kids mm -hmm. the number varies first of all uh, according to the number of shoe boxes we get but also to the needs of the to the needs of the children and to the needs of the family and the second question was, uh, let me see, yes, Steve Maguire. Uh, what is the demographic within Romania? Do you require more teens rather than babies or household boxes? Uh, ideally, now I'm just saying ideally, we would need all of them. However, from how things are going with the children and the beneficiaries we work with, and with the children who are in institutions and uh, or orphanages and small group homes, I would say that the number of boxes or the boxes that we need the most are the ones for teenagers, boys and girls. Uh, because as I was saying before, we started uh, uh, delivering uh, boxes some years ago, uh, children in, uh, instit in orphanages, in small group homes that we have constantly worked with, have grown now. They are uh, they are uh, teenagers. Also, uh, children in uh, families uh, at risk. Most of them are teenagers because with uh, younger children, families can somehow handle uh, financial issues and can somehow cover their needs and can provide for them. However, for teenagers, is it is most uh, it is the most problematic. Therefore, I would say that uh, teenager boxes are needed the most. However, we should not uh, we should not uh, uh, exclude the baby boxes that, because they are very important because unfortunately for many of these families baby items especially newborn babies so baby items are quite expensive at least in Romania many families cannot afford to buy such uh, 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 items for newborn babies and those are very very helpful as well these were the two questions that I wanted to answer because I've seen them in the in the chat Thank you. Thank you. Dawn, you've got your hand up. I, I was just going to share a couple of things. In terms of contents of boxes, one of the wee patterns that we've developed over the years is when we have Northeast clubs and folk coming down from Orkney and Shetland, sometimes they'll draw off and bags and boxes with additional items that haven't been enough to fill our shoe box. 
and we box them up and we send them down to the warehouse and we leave Nigel and his colleagues to look through them. Um, <laughs> and at Easter, we had, uh, we, weren't, we haven't been doing shoeboxes this year at our club, even though we normally do a lot. But at Easter, we got some donations from a local Sainsbury, Sainsbury branch that's been supporting us for years. And, and what we got were lots of items that were stock that had been brought in for the Red Nose Day. And we literally got about six cardboard boxes of all kinds of things. And we just reparceled them and sent them down to Nigel. Um, I'm not sure how much work there was involved for Nigel, but it, I think, I think it's, it's, it, it is there because in terms of the arrangements we have, um, in district with um, dice carriers in Aberdeen and with Spectra Glass in Perth. And these are relationships that Ron has built up brilliantly over the years. There, there are opportunities to leave um, other boxes uh, uh, which will be transported to the warehouse as well as individual shoe boxes. Can I just tell you what happens to those goods? Would that well, be okay if I could just explain what happens next when we get those? Yeah. Um, as I've said, we do get a fair number of boxes that, although we don't check boxes by definition, we do put boxes to one side if we have a concern about them. Um, and invariably, what they need is something else putting in the box to finish it off. Uh, sometimes... They are dreadful, I have to admit, but more often than not, it's just a box needs something else in it. Um, my team that does this is called Jill, and she happens to be my wife. <laughs> and at present, we've got five pallets full of boxes that she's working her way through um, to do what we call a repack, um, because sometimes you can put things together or whatever. Um, so the sort of donation you've sent um, helps to fill out some boxes that otherwise are not quite up to standard. Um, and of course we get donations from around the country um, of a similar nature. We, we also get monetary donations from some clubs and uh, we use that money sometimes to go, and Jill will actually physically go round shops and buy items to put in the boxes and she's just been allocated two thousand pound to go and buy things that will fill out boxes normally we would be buying things like um children's gloves scarves hats um, underwear vests things of that nature or household items um and again, it, it's to fill out the boxes. So that's what happens. But my team of people is one, and it's Jill. Um, and she spends at present two days a week in the warehouse going through all the boxes. And I say at the moment, she's got a challenge because uh, we've been closed down for so long. We inherited quite a backlog. So we, we've got somewhere in the region, I would think, of a thousand boxes to sort through. Uh, that need bits and pieces putting in. But that's what happens to your donation. Um, the only thing I do say, I mean, make sure that anything you send, please, goes in a shoebox. Because if it doesn't go in a shoebox, there's not a lot we can do with it. And people do send us huge teddy bears. <clears throat> now, Addy may remember when I came out there, we brought one with us called, it was as big as me, and we called him Shoey. <laughs> and he went into um, a family home, I think, and was gleefully received. I must admit, the joy of that young man running around with that teddy bear um, was absolutely over the world. But we don't, when we're sending a lorry load of boxes out, we don't want to have to take boxes off the lorry to make room for other things. If this space, we'll take it. But primarily what we need are things that go in shoe boxes not things that fill up somebody else's wardrobe that they want rid of and so they send it to us um, because we can't do a lot with that. If it won't fit in your shoebox, it won't fit in mine either. So we would ask you to um, bear that one in mind when you're sending us stuff. But the, the red nose stuff, it's all gone. It's all been put into boxes. What on earth the children will do with it when it gets to Romania, I've no idea because whether they have a red nose day out there, I'm not sure. <laughs> 
But if you see lots of children running around um, Baimara with red noses, you'll know where they came from, Ali. <laughs> yeah, of course. <laughs> and just just one more thing: uh, the the bear Chewy is still in the home. He's is still, he? Yeah. yeah, he's still he's still the 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 star of that small family home. Oh, marvelous! He's still there. I'm aware that um, some people are having to leave to go to further Rotary meetings. So do we have any other questions? Somebody actually asked in the chat, Adi, um, should they put in face masks? Um, I would personally say no. Okay. Thank you for offering, but I would say no because, these, uh, because the children that uh, are in state care receive them, of course, for free. And the families that uh, the families that are vulnerable and the families who um, are at risk of being separated uh, uh, from their children and so on and so forth, uh, they are included in uh, different schemes of uh, local authorities. And at least from this point of view, they are they are somehow supported. So they are covered with this. Thank you. And we also, as Hope and Homes, we also sourced out uh, lots of masks from our partners, from our, uh, from our uh, partners as in companies or producers of masks. And we, we received like 300,000 from someone, 100,000 from a different company, so on and so forth. And we are somehow, we managed to cover the, uh, uh, the needs of the families and of the vulnerable children and, uh, and adults during this critical period. But again, thank you for, for asking this. Thank you. Uh, do we have any other questions? If there are, just put them in the chat box and we'll try and answer them. Um, Ron will speak again at the end. So Ron, I'm aware that I don't think Jason's actually joined us tonight, has he? I haven't seen him, maybe. No, so... He's having, he was having a I, I, am, I am here. Oh, we well, are, Jason. sorry. I'm, just, I'm sitting back listening. <laughs> I couldn't see you. I've been flicking back and forth to see you. Uh, no, I... I, uh, I I haven't had my supper, so I switched off my video so I could hear half my supper. So I was listening. <laughs> there, I mean, Jason um, collects the shoe boxes and gets them delivered for us. Is there anything you want to add, Jason? For us? No, uh, you know, it's it's something my start. My dad started off <clears throat> through his work with the Rotary Club back in the nineties, uh, and it's something that you know, as a family, we will continue and will support. You know, going forward. You know, it's it's it, it's gone through uh, a tough last year, like we all have. But I'm sure it will bounce back. You know, one thing that seems to happen through things like this is there is a, you know, people will come out and support, and we gather around each other. And I'm sure, I'm sure, going on into this year, maybe later on in the year, maybe not into Easter, but later yeah. on, I'm sure there'll be a, a bumper much. load of equipped uh, stuff heading out to Romania. Okay. Hello, um... I'm sure Ron tells you often enough, but I will reiterate the fact we're very grateful for, for all your assistance. Uh, it's, it's, agreed. Just, it's not a problem, honestly. Not a problem at all. Thank you. Well, if there's nothing else, I will hand over to DG Alistair. Thank you very much, Mary, and, and especially a, a big thank you to, to Adi for joining us tonight. Rotary's goals of friendship and especially service are at the heart of every one of our clubs. And many of you will have heard me say on a number of occasions now as I visit your clubs, it's what we do that matters. And every year clubs give thousands of hours of service in our communities. And every year we donate hundreds of thousands of pounds to local, national and international good causes. But here in front of us right now is a charity, the Shoebox Appeal, which we can support with very little time or money required. This is the perfect low cost, high impact program for Rotary Clubs. It changes lives and it's a fantastic advert for our organisation. Shoe boxes can be ordered and filled by anyone or, or, or any group and clubs really need to start to use this more to involve other organisations where they can. Schools, churches, scouts, guides, boys brigade, any group who you can make a connection with in your community. This is a charity that has a huge impact on children's lives around Eastern Europe. And I really think we must continue to give our support to it. And I'm going to pass over now to Ron McKeel, just to reiterate once more 
about how we can all get involved as clubs. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Can I? Can you hear me? Yeah. Okay, thank you. So I'm, I could just begin by saying to everybody who's taken part tonight, thank you very much and very much indeed, and to and to thank Alistair for what he's just said. I mean, this is an important project, and many clubs have taken part in it. And what, um, as I mentioned earlier about ordering boxes, you can order boxes now, which will be delivered to you by the Shoebox Charity. Um, and we'll get out details as to when the sort of collection of those boxes will be. But previously, it's been around about November. Um, um, so as a, as a district, um, I think, we, as um, was mentioned earlier, we have provided some sort of 20% of the boxes for the charity. I mean, it's been really excellent. So thank you very much for your your support. Um, and again, isn't it fantastic on Zoom that you can get somebody to come from Bayamara in, uh, in Romania and give us a sort of a tremendous um, insight into what happens to our boxes, which is much more um, than you, you get if you have somebody coming to your club who's not been involved with the charity. I mean, I too have been in Romania, met with them, um, Adi and Bayamar. I was longer there with um, with Nigel, um, and it's it. What I was assured of that our boxes, when they go into it was Romania, we were at that our boxes go to where they're supposed to go, and that was really quite encouraging because that's a question I'm often asked. A question, Mary, that came up on the chat box was the cost of the boxes. The, the boxes cost ninety pence each. Um, I'm also asked um, about the coin that's placed on the box. Um, I think on the boxes that come out, it, it asks for two pound, a two pound coin to be taped on. Um, some clubs are doing that. Others, in fact, I would suggest that if you want to, if you want to meet the cost of the boxes for your club, um, to make it a pound. Or you might even think we don't need to do that because people who are putting in money, putting stuff into the boxes, each box is costing five, six, seven, eight pounds, and uh, getting the box back is uh, is, is sufficient. But uh, again, if I can just say thank you very much to everybody that took part um, as the coordinator. I'm actually delighted with the number of people that took part tonight. Okay, thank you very much. Thanks, Mary. Thank you. Well, I'd like to add my thanks to everyone um, who took part tonight and to everyone who came along on such a lovely night. Right. And I will now just hand, before I hand over to John, John can do the, the vote of thanks. But I'd also like to say thanks to John, who's had a big input in bringing everything together tonight. So I'll now hand over to John Milne, who will do the vote of thanks. Thank you very much. Um, I'm going to screen share again, Alistair, if I can. Yep. Right, is it back up? Yep. Right, all I want to do is I want to pop on, before, I'm going to show you one slide at the end. What I've done here is I've just popped on the, Is that showing up? Yep. Yeah. No, it's not. It's playing up, isn't it? Uh, you need to get down one, another. That's it. That's fine. Uh, are you, I'm on full screen. No. 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 Right. Hang on a minute. I know what I'm needing to do. Right. I am to IT what Hitler was to world peace, folks. Hang on. There we go. You're on the one that just gives the shoebox or details, John. Aye, aye, so I've got that one. Right, you need to go down two. And then I need to go down two and try right. right. Is that shown on full screen or is it just on the side panel? It's on full screen, yeah. Is it? Right. So, in, in pulling together some thanks, I just wanted to show you this. This is, this is an image that we found many years ago. Uh, it was one of several images that existed many years ago, and, and it's a poster. And it, we took it and we made it into, at our club, we made it into a series of posters and leaflets. And I'm going to just leave that up and then talk you through the words at the end. Um, I picked up on, on Addy's presentation from colleagues several months ago, and we did a mid-March one at our own club. And Addy, it is an absolute pleasure and an absolute privilege to have you join us, sir. Um, I'll, I've, I'm a newcomer still. I've, I, I say I'm a newcomer. I came into Rotary 2006. And for all the time that we go to schools and we do school assemblies and presentations, 
There, there is an impact in your words, Addy. There is a, a message that comes through that's quite remarkable. And I think all of us, as Mary said earlier, all of us who've heard it before come away quite touched by it and quite inspired by it. So thank you very much for putting the presentation together and thank you, thank you for bringing home to us a, a new dimension in terms of what every individual shoebox makes and the impact it makes. And I honestly think we never understood that fully until we saw your presentation. Um, can I thank Ron also, not only for being here tonight, but as Mary said earlier, Ron has led since 2008 the district's shoebox efforts. Um, Nigel Danby and his small team of, I think, seven trustees are down there doing it all. And in the images that we use, we talk about the shoebox journey. And, and there's an enormous connection between what Nigel and, and his team of trustees does down at the charity and in the warehouse. And they are the people that connect up everything that we do and get it out into the countries and into the situations with people like Addy, who are the distribution network abroad. Um, can I also thank Alistair Robb for coming along tonight and hosting it and also for his words at the end. Um, when we put this together, it's very much been a team effort. Um, we had a rehearsal last night helped by Graham Archibald. So thank you, Graham, if you're on. The, the, the other part of this that I just wanted to mention is I'll, sh I'll just go through the image, OK? There was, a there was a question in chat that I responded to. Now, this, this poster has been created, and what it says at the bottom, and it's not very good because it was taken off a PDF, it says, the gift of a shoebox that contains toys, toilet rays, educational items, or household goods is a drop of happiness to the people of Central and Eastern Europe who live in a world of poverty. We're repeating what we said earlier, but it says, for many... It will be the first present they had ever received, and it lets them know that somebody somewhere cares. If you would like to take part, we would love to hear from you. So my particular thanks tonight also to Mary, who's worked very hard and very intensely with ourselves to put this evening together. Um, can I also just say in, in, in closing that Jason Moyer does an incredible amount of work behind the scenes Unlike me, he's incredibly modest. And let's pay tribute, Jason, to your dad, Dave Moyer. Dave Moyer in Aberdeen, who set up the, the, the business with his wife many years ago, was a founding member of Dice Rotary Club and its, and its inaugural president. And way before the Rotary was connecting with the Rotary Shoebox Scheme and the Rotary Charity, Dave would go out with his wife, Jean, and do all kinds of things abroad just as individuals. And for them to then come behind the Rotary scheme and for Jason to take that into the next generation has been quite remarkable. Thank you all for coming this evening. So what I'd like you to do now is if you all go on to the mute and unmute, Right, muted yourself now, John. <laughs> Sorry about that. Right. So <laughs> I can come off mute and you all can come off mute. And bravo, bravo. That was good. Thank everybody that's put tonight together and Addy in particular. And can we do it in the usual way with a bit of volume? Thank you. Thank you. Just may I, may I say one thing, actually two things. Uh, it's always a pleasure and a privilege to to talk about the, the impact that these shoe boxes are making. It's a pleasure to to talk to the people who are putting in so much effort for make or to make these these things possible. On behalf of Hope and Homes for Children, the organization that I represent, I would like to thank you for your hard work and for your energy that you're putting into uh, bringing these boxes or into collecting these boxes and then delivering it. But 
mostly on behalf of the children, I would like to thank you for giving them the opportunity to do this. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh. If anyone has any questions after the event, just um, send me an email and I will or them to the correct person and try and get answers. And if there's nothing else, then I think we'll um, say goodbye and thanks to everyone for coming along and thanks for all the speakers. Thank you. Thank you. Bye, Thank you. Bye. 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 B